now I'd like to uh, introduce Joanna Wang, who's going to be giving a speech entitled Snow Life. But the way I see it, learning to snowboard is one of those defining moments in my life that has really changed my outlook. The seeds were sowed for snowboarding when I met my friend and now roommate, Chloe. Freshman and sophomore year, she mentioned all going snowboarding all the way back in California in the mountains, which is ironic because I'm from Wisconsin, where the average temperature is 10 degrees Fahrenheit in the winter and snowstorms are in the north. But I never skied or snowboarded, spending my childhood being too studious and not adventurous enough. So two years ago, I added snowboarding to my bucket list and told myself I would learn it sometime. A series of personal challenges later, having finished over half of college and fallen into a rut, I realized time was flying by. What had I really done that wasn't expected of me and was something that I wanted to do on my own court? When job interview season came around, whenever someone asked, Tell me about yourself, or what are your passions? I was struggling to find an answer that wasn't generic or Who was I, and what did I do? Upon much pondering and self-questioning, I decided that I would take action instead of making plans to do things. So on January 1st of 2015, I decided emphatically, dragging along my siblings, that I would learn to snowboard and be super cool. And here's where the story began. It was a beautiful sunny day, a perfect 30 degrees there. My excitement as I rested on my gear was palpable, and my eagerness as I dashed over to the bunny slopes as fast as I could in my clunky snowboard boots was not to be contained. Within the first hour, however, I was drenched in sweat, wobbling and struggling to maintain my balance, with both my feet strapped onto one board. Getting up the barely inclined hill using the rope towel was already a struggle because every time I grabbed the rope to pull me up the hill, my entire board and feet attached to the goal flying. When I finally made it up, I was already out of breath. It was the strangest, most cycling experience, and I alternated between falling on my butt and face planting downhill as I lost my balance, thoroughly bruising my knees, elbows, shoulders, and backside. And also eating plenty of snow. The incline of probably one degree on the bunny slopes felt like 45 degrees that flailed around every time I strapped in and got up. But each time, I kept telling myself, if Chloe can do it, you can do it too. Stop being a woman. <laughs> a few beginner lessons, and five hours later, I managed to make it down one of their easiest to trails by scraping along the long edge of my board. For the next two days, every inch of my body ached with every move, and I climbed stairs, wobbling like a duck. The worst had been falling down from because your entire body goes down in one plane, and there's nothing to do but try to use your knees to break your fall. As a result, I sported bruises the size of melons on my knees for about two weeks. But I never felt more accomplished at the start of a year than I did then. 
Now that I could at least stay upright on my board, I eagerly planned my next snowboarding trip, the intention to learn how to link my turns and snowboard like a pro. Little did I know, however, that this time, instead of fluffy snow on the ground to cushion my falls, the slopes were very icy and the paths were narrow, uneven, and winding. When I strapped my feet in and found myself sliding towards the tree line without any control, I panicked and fell as a seasoned veteran glided by me. When I did manage to move in the direction I wanted to go, I tried to practice turning from side to side and going down the hill back first. Just when I thought I actually had it going for me, I started careening downhill, lost my grip, and bam, down I went, slid on the ground with the icy impact, sending a painful shudder from my tailbone all the way up to my head. I'm not sure if it was the shock or the actual pain from the fall, but a strange sensation went through my nose and my eyes start, began tearing up. A kid on skis slid by and asked in an endearing tone if I was okay, and in the manliest voice possible, I grunted. I'm all good. <laughs> and finally let loose several escapes. When I finally got myself back to a somewhat upright position, I was shaking like a leaf at every movement on my board. The rest of the day entailed several more falls like this on hard packed icy ground, that fresh and all fading bruises on my knees and shoulders, and by the end of it, the prospect of staring down a hill with an incline of one degree was absolutely terrifying, and I wondered if I had developed PTSD. After the second trip, I never wanted to get on the snowboard again. A couple weeks later, the opportunity came to go, and I almost said no. But I realized all my life I tried and done a lot of things half-heartedly, and then quit, like dancing ballet, playing tennis, learning languages, or being pre-med. And for once, I wanted to prove to myself that I could push through it and do it. There was something also that drew me to being out on the slopes away from cities. Or maybe it was just the fact that I felt really badass being a snowboarder, because all my life I never felt like I was someone really cool and rebellious. So I went, filled with both nervous anticipation and dread, again and again, and on one amazing day, in one miraculous moment, I turned from backside to frontside and frontside to backside on my snowboard without wiping out in the snow. And it was magical. The neurons in my brain finally fired the proper synaptic connections and sent the correct nerve impulses down my body. And this blend of adrenaline and calm serenity of gliding down the hill, rocking back and forth on the board is an experience that I can't possibly describe. Only one you have to experience yourself. My sense of accomplishment on that fateful day was unparalleled, and my friends and family had to deal with me beaming and talking about snowboarding for weeks. I have never looked back since that moment of linking the turns and scaling new mountains. And I take every chance I can, whenever it's cold enough to get out there and feel the cool breeze on my cheeks, see the beautiful view from the top of the mountain, and slide down the glittering, glittering, freshly green trails. It's not that I don't fall anymore when I'm on my board, but the fact that even after I've fallen, I've taught myself not to let my confidence get shaken, and to pick myself up and continue moving. I've since then also taken up skiing, because why not? There's no better time than now to learn and do new things. And although I am not sure how good I am at either, it doesn't matter, because in the end, it's so much fun and completely worth all the effort I've put in. So now when you ask me, tell me about yourself, or what is one of your passions, my answer is snowboarding. Thank you.